Hello everybody, happy Sunday. Hopefully your weekend has been going well and the weather has been relatively kind. It's been, uh, well, as it's Saturday right now, it's not been bad so far, but uh, knock on wood, we'll see how that goes. It's time for everybody's favorite segment, History by Mail, but before we get into that, another history-related note. Uh, Tripolic X, Cards and Stuff, I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm, you know, I'm terrible at pronouncing things that I've never heard before. Um, he's been opening a lot of this stuff, and I was able to get a couple of boxes of it. The historic, the pieces of the past historical premium edition. He's been pulling some absolutely monster, monster cards out of there, and I did get a couple boxes of that. And uh, I think one of them, at least one of them, will probably be going in a little box battle against him in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Link to his channel down below. Check out all your history stuff. And now. We get into ours for the month of May, and we just finished up the, because they do the quarterly units, or uh, not the quarterly, uh, what, what would the, the, what every third they do um, a different unit, and last month we finished up the unit on um, the civil rights movement, but now we have a treaty, let's see. A treaty between the United States of America and the French Republic. Okay, President of the United States and the... Oh, I cannot read the handwriting. Uh... Army Ministry. Yeah, I cannot... And it's signed by treaty. I cannot read any of that, so... Okay. Oh, there it is. It's the transcript of the falling down. We're just going to put that right there. It is the transcript of the Louisiana Purchase. So, oh man, that is a lot of stuff. We're just going to read the top part because the rest of it would take all day, but I will put it there if anybody would like to read it. Uh, April 30th, 1803, the Louisiana Purchase Treaty. Treaty between the United States of America and the French Republic. The President of the United States of America and the First Consul of the French Republic in the name of the French people, desiring to remove all sources of misunderstanding relative to objects of discussion mentioned in the second and fifth articles of the Convention of the Eighth, Vendemer and uh, nine and nine thirty oh thirtieth of September eighteen hundred, relative to the rights claimed between the United States in virtue of the treaty concluded at Madrid the twenty seventh of October seventeen ninety five between his Catholic Majesty and the said United States, and the willing to strengthen the union of, and friendship, which at the time of the said convention was happily reestablished between the two nations, have respectively named their uh, pleni plenipotentaries. Plenipotentaries? I'm not 100% sure what that means. Dad, if you're watching this, what does that word mean? To wit. The President of the United States, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate of the said states, Robert J. Livingston, Minister Plenipoten, Plenipot, Plenipotentiary, I guess, of the United States, and James Monroe, Minister, that word, and Envoy Extraordinary of the said states near the government, near the government of the French Republic, and the First Consul in the name of the French people, citizen of Francis Barbe Marbois, Minister of the Public Treasury, who, after having respectively exchanged their full powers, have agreed to the following articles. I'm just going to put that up there because that was a literal mouthful. <coughs> so I'm going to do it there. Feel free to pause and read it if you will. But essentially, it's we're giving up this, we're taking this, we're giving up this, we're taking this. And um, never the never Mark Twain shall meet. That is, I did not know that the, I, I shouldn't be surprised. It's a government document, it's a treaty between two nations, so you have to think it's going to be uh, verbose. But now, into the history part of it. So settle in, and let's enjoy. Treaty ceding the province of Louisiana to the, to the United States, April 30th, 1803. Enclosed are the first two pages, good God, of the Treaty of Session signed by the U.S. and France in 1803. This treaty, together with its version in French, oh God, I, I can barely read the one in English, and two conventions regarding the financial aspects of the agreement make up the Louisiana Purchase Agreement. For $15 million, 
The U.S. purchased roughly 828,000 square miles of land west of the Mississippi River, doubling the size of the country. Yeah, it was, it was massive, massive land, land purchase. The Europeans in Louisiana Territory. Beginning in the 17th century, French explorers came to the Mississippi River Valley and created settlements throughout the region. By the mid-1700s, France controlled the entire Mississippi River Valley, also known as the Louisiana Territory, from the Gulf of Mexico in the from the Gulf of Mexico in the south of Canada in the south in the south, I'm sorry, I read that completely wrong, to Canada in the north and from the Appalachian Mountains in the east to the Rocky Mountains in the west. So that essentially is the middle of the United States. North American territorial disputes between France and Britain erupted into the French and Indian War, known in Europe as the Seven Years' War, from 1756 to 1763. Well, that's actually apt, because you know the Hundred Years' War, I think, lasted 118 years. French losses resulted in the cessions of the French territory between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains to Spain, with the Treaty of Fontainebleau and the French territory and the French territory between the Mississippi River and the Appalachian Mountains to Britain with the Treaty of Paris. After the American Revolutionary War, Great Britain returned Florida to Spain, consolidating Spanish, ter Spanish territory from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean and north to Canada. Spain's power was waning, however, and Spain spent few uh, resources developing the area. In 1801, France and Spain signed a treaty returning the Spanish-controlled Louisiana Territory to France, and in exchange, French territories in Tuscany would, be re would return to Spain. French power, and, uh, French power had been revived under Napoleon Bonaparte, and Americans, who had been increasingly moving westward into the Ohio River and Tennessee River valleys, feared that the French would limit free access to the Mississippi River and the port of New Orleans. This port was strategically vital for shipping goods to and from areas west of the Appalachian Mountains. President Thomas Jefferson ordered Robert Livingston, the U.S. Minister to France, to negotiate the purchase of New Orleans with French Minister Charles Maurice de Talleyrand. Uh, Louisiana Purchase Negotiations Despite American fears, France was slow to take control of Louisiana. Pinckney's Treaty had been signed with Spain in 1795 and gave American merchants the rights to navigate the Mississippi River and use the port of New Orleans for storage and export. Americans transported flour, tobacco, bacon, and feathers. I mean, that's... <laughs> what else do you really need out of life? Among other items, at the turn of the 19th century, the French pressured Spanish authorities to revoke the Pinckney Treaty. Former U.S. ministers to France and future president... Uh, James Monroe was then sent to Paris to help Livingston negotiate the purchase of New Orleans. The American delegation originally sought only to acquire the city of New Orleans. Interesting. Jefferson had authorized Monroe to form an alliance with the British if the, Fran if the French refused to sell New Orleans. <coughs> Excuse me. Even if it was meant, even if it meant war with France. In mid-April of 1803, French Treasury Minister Francois. Uh, Barbe Marbois, surprised the American delegation by offering to sell the entire Louisiana Territory. Livingston and Monroe agreed for the price of $11.25 million, plus the U.S. assumption of $3.75 million worth of American citizens' claims against France. Jefferson, who had authorized the purchase of only New Orleans and West Florida up to $10 million, was extremely pleased with the result. I mean, that's a, a lot. The treaty was dated April, April 30th and was signed by Robert Livingston, James Monroe, and Francois Barbet Marbois at the Hotel Tabouf in Paris. Um, apologies, Fabian, Fabian, if I'm just butchering the crap out of that. The U.S. Senate ratified the purchase and the next day authorized Thomas Jefferson to take possession of the new territory and set up a military, a temporary, pardon, military government. Congress then enacted legislation to establish local civil governments and authorized several missions to chart the new territory. On December 30th, 1803, France turned over, ironic, New Orleans with the flag-raising ceremony in what is now Jackson Square. I've been there, actually. Very nice square. A historic park in the French quarter of the city. The down payment, $3 million in gold, was shipped to France, and the remaining balance was paid for in bonds. 
See, this is fascinating. Like, I knew to pause. You know, we all knew, or most of us were pretty familiar with what exactly we got from the Louisiana Purchase, but I did not, but the, it's the fine details that I'm really, really enjoying. Response to the Purchase. Members of the Federalist Party claimed the purchase of foreign territory was unconstitutional as it would massively increase federal executive power at the expense of states' rights. Jefferson believed that the Louisiana Purchase fell under the Constitution's provision to allow presidents to negotiate treaties. That's a fair point. Other opponents feared the new territory would increase the number of slaveholding states, which it kind of did, and widen the rift between the North and the South, which also it kind of did. Still, others were concerned about granting American citizenship to French, Spanish, and free black people living in New Orleans, many of whom were Catholic. Many Protestant New England Federalists feared the U.S. population would shift west and dilute their economic and political power. The purchase did cause massive change. With this single purchase of 828,000 square miles, the size of the U.S. virtually doubled overnight, the largest territorial gain in American history. France had governed only a small portion of the Louisiana Territory, with most of the land inhabited by Native Americans. The non-Native population of the Territory is estimated to have been around 60,000 people, of which roughly half were slaves. The Louisiana Purchase included land for what is now uh, 15 U.S. states and portions of the Canadian provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan. Shout out Canada. The western borders of the territory were clarified by Spain with the 1819 adam onis Treaty, or the Florida Purchase Treaty, and the northern borders were adjusted with the Treaty of 1818 with Britain. Historians note a combination of various factors that led Napoleon to sell the Louisiana Territory to America. France had failed to quash the St. Dom San Domingue, I, I don't think you pronounce the T, the San Domingue Slave Revolution in Haiti. Fran uh, in Haiti, France's economy was deteriorating and its resources were spread thin. Further, a war with Great Britain was imminent in which Great Britain would probably institute a naval blockade of France. The aftermath. Uh, one of... One of the Jefferson administration's enduring achievements was securing the Louisiana Territory uh, for less than three cents an acre. God, that is nothing. American settlement of the newly acquired lands began immediately after the Louisiana Purchase, and by 1804, a territorial government had been established. That did not take long. It took time for the U.S. to establish trade dominance in the newly acquired territory as trade along the Mississippi and Missouri rivers were do was dominated by British, French, and Native American traders. Jefferson commissioned three missions to analyze and map the new territory and to clarify the boundaries of the purchase. The Corps of Discovery Expedition, also known as the Lewis and Clark Expedition, I actually have, <clears throat> I bought at a book sale the complete journals of the Lewis and Clark expedition. One day I'm going to start reading them. Uh, ran from May 1804 to September 1806, exploring the Missouri River. In 1806, the Red River expedition explored the Red River Basin, and the Pike expedition explored the Arkansas River territory. Uh, the Arkansas River area, I'm sorry. The expeditions found efficient routes across the West and set up Amer an American presence in the territory. The expeditions also studied the area's plant and animal life and established relationships with native tribes. Captain Meriwether Lewis and 2nd Lieutenant William Clark, along with a select group of U.S. Army volunteers, took off from Pittsburgh, let's go, uh, reached the Pacific coast and ended their journey in St. Louis to report their findings via mail to President Jefferson. Uh, on April 30th, 1812, nine years to the day after the Louisiana Purchase, Louisiana was admitted as the 18th state in the Union and the first state to be created from the lands acquired in the Louisiana Purchase. In the following decades, many tribes would be forcibly removed from their lands east of the Mis Mississippi River to lands further west. Well, yeah, that, that you know, the, one of the more, you know, and I've said it before, history's not pretty, but it, it happened and we need to learn from it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. The Louisiana Purchase was one of the largest land deals in history and by far the largest in American history. The Purchase dramatically changed the geography, demographics, economy, and history of America. 
This is the first of four documents in our American Expansion Series. Okay, so that's what we're going to get for the next three months. To learn about the Louisiana Purchase, there's the link right there. And I have to give the shout out to Pittsburgh because uh, in this they were talking about the port of New Orleans being um, key. And with Pittsburgh, for those that aren't familiar with the geography of the city, you know, the city where I grew up, <coughs> the old football stadium used to be called Three, R Three Rivers Stadium for good reason. There was a what they call Point State Park in Pittsburgh. It's kind of like a triangular thing that goes out into the river, and there's a big fountain where, you know, and, and it's like a park. But that is the where the two rivers, the Allegheny River and the Monongahela River in Pittsburgh, meet at that point to form the the to form the Ohio River. So essentially, um, you especially in that time, if you controlled Pittsburgh, you also controlled the rivers, which meant you controlled most of the country. And George Washington himself owned quite a lot of property in Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania in general and spent uh, a decent amount of time there from what I've read in history. But that was, this is, I love history. We all know it. And this was a good one. So the first of the American expansion units, this, um, you know, fair warning uh, for people in the future, this is not going to be pretty. I'm, I'm sure at some point uh, something about the Trail of Tears is going to be referenced uh, possibly next month. Um, not a good time in American history, but, you know, again, no country in the world has had per you know has had a time where there wasn't something bad happening but that's the good thing we are going to continue to learn from it and what we always need to do is learn from it so we can prevent it from happening again in the future so that's that's the true goal of history and i've been rambling for nearly 17 minutes thank you so much for taking the time to listen to some history link to tripolic x cards and stuff down below please check out his history stuff um, and uh, stay tuned for some of the historical premium edition openings. The stuff he's been pulling have been absolutely incredible, and I cannot wait to get into it. So thank you very much. Hopefully you have a great rest of the weekend. We will see you tomorrow.